Alrighty, so a new season started recently, and I thought with the new season starting like yesterday, I was gonna decide to make a video on Mad Eyes. Now, my old Mad Eyes guide on the character, it's still good in certain areas, but it's a little bit out of date on things like the build, and there's some tricks and tips I wanted to mention that I didn't bring up last time. Need to preface, I am not a professional Mad Eyes. I used to be S Badge, but that was like over a year ago, so I would not say that I'm professional right now or anything. But I do know the strategies and the tips and the meta with him very thoroughly. I always keep up with that, and I know a bunch of little tips and tricks that the average player will not know, and I just want to share that here. And there's also a whole bunch of other sources I'm going to include below for you to check out, like YouTube channels on NAEU and Chinese sources that I think are phenomenal. And you should really give the time to look into. So first of all, I'm going to start with the actual persona. Persona. So if you're coming in playing Mad Eyes as someone who's never played him before, let's go over his basic abilities. Mad Eye makes walls. Yeah. So there are these things called consoles, which are scattered around the map. And think of it like Joseph, uh, Joseph's cameras. Whenever you approach one, you're able to interact with it. And it allows you to draw walls at every single console location in the map. So you approach one console and that allows you to access every console as long as you're standing next to it. And at those consoles, you're able to draw walls. You can draw um, as many walls as the energy will allow you to. Energy drains whenever you're looking at a console and drawing walls. Like if you draw a wall, energy will drain and then you're not as able to draw as many walls. And then once you leave that area, it will slowly rebuild its energy when it's not being looked at. Survivors are able to access these consoles and waste energy, so you aren't able to use them. That's something to keep in mind. Now, with these walls, you're able to block off areas, hit survivors, and do a whole bunch of other things. These walls take three seconds to rise, so keep that in mind when you're drawing them. One potato, two potato, three potato. One potato, two potato, three potato. One potato, two potato, three potato. Also, you have this thing called portable console. That is your first presence. So once you get your presence, you get a portable console, which basically means that you don't have to physically be standing next to a console to access a console. Fine. I'll do it myself. So you can access any of the consoles from wherever you're standing, which is nice. Besides that, don't forget that you also, at three presents, or like your final presence, get the overdrive or overclock. I always forget the name. But the ability to make your walls speed up. So it changes the three second uh, cooldown between each wall being risen to two seconds. And by doing that, you're able to put up walls faster. The downside is that when you do that, the walls that you put up use more energy and it takes a longer time for the walls to regain energy in those areas. So only use it if you really need to use it. It's not something you should just flippantly turn on, you know, for the fun of it. So that's the main thing. And let's actually look at the persona. And then we can see what we're actually dealing with. Okay, so for the actual persona section, this is what I have right here for myself. But this is just more personal. I'm actually going to make a new thing. And I'm going to show you what most people are sort of using. The build I have is not a bad build though. It's a trump card build, but I just prefer trump sometimes. I switch it up though. So over here, I'm gonna show generally what we're starting with. If you wanna go a chip build, you go trump card and insolence, or insolence, not and, uh, or, either or. You do not do both, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, you go up as well oftentimes into destructiveness. You do that in a chase build always, sometimes in a chip build. And if you don't know the difference, a chip build is a build where the whole goal is to apply damage on survivors at a distance versus a chase build, which is focusing on the idea that you won't be able maybe to get the first down with consoles, so you have to do it on foot. Both are viable strategies, but you have to sort of lean into one or the other. All right, so don't go detention. I saw one person on the Chinese little leaderboard who had detention. I saw a video from them. I believe they were top 15th at the time. They're the only person who's done it that I can see, and they only did it in that one video, so I don't really know what they were doing there. Uh, yeah, besides that, destructiveness I like. I like Berserker uh, for camping. I like Rage if I'm going against a stunner. If I'm going against a stunner, uh, this is also a good trick to take, Desperate Fight. 
Uh, inertia can be good just to get that cool down and tinnitus. Of course, you have to have tinnitus. So again, there's really a lot more options that I'm going to be showing on the screen, some popular ones that are being used in China. Trump card is one of the ones that some people are using. I use trump card on certain maps. If I just want to get abnormal, I switch into abnormal usually. And insolence is really good when you're not able to get that first hit off and you want to be able to use pro portable console when you're in a chase. Pardon me. Gosh darn. Another thing, hunt right here is very popular. That's the cat trait. And then uh, giant claw and control freak are very good because they allow you to get to a chair. The increased uh, struggle time on survivors allows you to get to a better mad eye chair. And then the shorter chair time makes it just easier to camp and kill. So those are very good, personally. I like to go for that. Hunt is really good if you're going a chase build as well, which is the cat, because that makes it so that if you don't interact with an object, your chase speed will increase after you've been chasing for a certain amount of time. It's also decent on a chip build. So that's the main thing you really have to know. I'm going to show some pictures of some popular builds I've seen. But really, unlike last Mad Eye guide I made where I was like, you have to do this build or you're probably going to lose, it has changed a lot. Um, you can really vary and go for your personal preferences, and you're going to be able to work with that if you are skilled and practiced in using that type of build. Alrighty. Rightio, so I had a little bit of lag, so I had to restart this section. No problem. I'm starting off with Mad Eyes, and here's the lag. Anyway, so we're going to go over to the console here in this spawn. And when you're at this spawn, you want to check over at the bridge first. Um, there's usually someone at the cipher here, or they'll try to run to the console that's right here. If they try to go to the console, try to knock them off, and you want to protect that spot. It's very important. There's a console in this area, which also overlaps here, so make sure you can protect that, which is nice in this area that has two little overlapping consoles. And you want to make sure that's safe. This is another area you might want to check and make sure. See, we have someone over here. They like to go to that console right there, or Cypher. And they also like to go to that area back there. Just block them and make sure that they can't do whatever they want to do. The decoding. Also, that console, yeah, this is the only one there. Nothing overlaps with that. So you got to keep that safe. Uh, over here is a little bit nice. See, we have the console actually under this platform here. You can hit under there, you can't see under there. And for the cipher here, we have multiple ways of hitting it. Um, there's actually a console on this side of the bridge which we can swing over and hit them with, which is really nice because they're not gonna run all the way around the bridge to, you know, drain the console. Gosh, my computer is heating up like a, like a firecracker. Anyway, uh, I hate this uh, uh, console spawn. Over here, it's not here this time, but if this ever is a spawn, cry, uh, cry, just cry. Because first of all, look how far away it is. <laughs> look how far of a drag it is from here to there. By the time you get there, the survivor is going to have ran and they'll be fine. Look at, look at that. Look at that. Look how long that is. And look, look how far I can reach. I can't even reach by the exit gate. So if they just go back there, they're safe. And there's like, well, what? Nothing I can do. Thanks, Netties, for not letting us be able to guard the gate here. It's very cool. And look, uh, wait, yeah. Pardon. All right, let me try that again. Sometimes I accidentally click off. See, I can't even reach the gate. It's, it's just too far. <laughs> if you're a survivor, uh, this is the gate you want to decode, by the way, just in case you didn't know. So I skipped a clip because I was lagging, and now I'm inside two-story. Two-story used to have a console here. The console is gone. Now we cry. Now there's still a cipher that spawns in here a lot of the time. And so we have to be creative. We have to use this console outside of the building to try to hit this area. Now, look at that. Do you see what happened there? Look at that. Do you see this wall? Did you see how I drew that wall and do you see what happened to it? I'm going to show you something again. Look at the, pay attention to this. I draw the wall and it does not go on the landing. Let's tr do that a few more times. See that? Let's probably do like one more, maybe two more. Yeah. That is a problem. And I mentioned this sort of in my last guide. I didn't go in this specific area because I forgot to, but the issue is that there are stairs there. There are stairs next to the console. And whenever there are stairs, these little stairs right here, you cannot go put a wall on multiple inclines at the same time. So you can still hit the cipher easy, but if you don't know about the stairs, that's going to be a problem. So now that you know, what you're supposed to do is scroll down 
and put it on top of the circle. Do not start before the circle. Put it on top of the circle. That's the only way you're going to hit it. But then again, the cipher is still pretty bad because say I'm over there, I can just walk to the side like I did and look, you can't even see me. <laughs> I'm invisible. <laughs> and look, like you're a survivor. Hey guys, let's come over here. Have a healing party. Everything's going to be fine. Go away, fly. Shoo, 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 shoo. Sorry about that. But yeah, it's like just have a healing party with the boys. Me and the boys healing at two-story. But yeah, so there's actually another cool trick you can do here, though. So say I'm mad eyes and I'm out here and I'm mad eyeing. Ha ha ha, rah, mad, mad eyeing sound. Well, here's what I can do if there's someone in two story. I look over, I see someone's there. Oh no, what am I, what, what am I to do as a mad eye? Well, here's what you do. Go to the two, uh, the, the two story window here and you can actually make a trap. So don't start in this corner. Don't, don't do it here. It will not work if you start here. What you're going to want to do is start at this ledge right here. This little ledge, start a wall and just put it forward like that. That might be a little bit too long. I'm just doing it for an example. It doesn't have to be so long. And then at this little like indention in the wall here or somewhere around this area, put another wall out. Boom. So now we start mad eyeing again. We approach the person. The person is scared. They're saying, oh no, mad eye's coming. Ah, they run. They vault. They proceed up the stairs they're running i'm chasing but oh no i'm old and i have arthritis how am i to hit them what am i to do side note you can also block off that window with a wall if you don't want to try this but anyway i jump i vault the wall after they vaulted and oh no call an ambulance but not for me you just got trapped <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker. Keep in mind that the walls will usually last longer. The reason it was short is because I spent a long time monologuing to you guys. But yeah, so you just build up something like this. Uh, bada bing. Bada boom. Hopefully my computer heat isn't being too annoying for you because I can hear that halfway across to Jupiter. Uh, we're in here. Survivor something somewhere around here. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. Uh, my arthritis, call an ambulance, call an ambulance, but not for me. And then we proceed to beat the child. Um, yeah, also I have really bad lag because of the particle effects, but I'm not going to change settings. I like the particle effects. It's worth it. See how I started in that corner where I told you not to do? Here's what will happen if you do that corner. <laughs> Even if you start it at the very edge, it will still have that gap there. I had that mistake when I first started using this. If you don't know, I saw this in a Japanese gameplay. There's actually a Japanese Mad Eye main server that I'm in, and that's where I learned it from. But anyway, that's a side note. Uh, so now I'm going to show you the slide. So I'm a survivor. We go up the slide, we go down the slide, as survivors tend to do. Now we go under the slide, and I'm going to show you why the slide counters Mad Eyes. So I draw a wall. I draw another wall. But I am fine. Don't ask me why Nettie said you're not allowed to draw walls under the slide. I don't, I don't know. But they said that. Look, look, I, you literally can't. So, um, not a lot of survivors know this. What happens so many times is that I'm chasing a survivor and they go up on top of the slide because for some weird reason, I don't, I don't know what survivors are thinking against Mad Eyes. They think that I can't hit them on the slide, but I can. I can hit you so easy on there. It's actually like touching fish in a barrel. It's, it's easy. So like, here's another thing, by the way. So if you're not going to hide under the slide and I'm physically running towards you, I can block off the front here so you cannot go down the slide. And then I can block off near the back of that circle and then you are trapped. See, I come and I proceed and I vault. You are dead. Bah, 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 bah. Now try if you can to not draw a wall at the bottom of the stairs here. Try, if you need to, do it. If not, here's why. You can't vault it, so you have to wait for the entire cooldown of the stair to disappear before you're able to actually get the person. If you make the trap and can't vault, just pick at them with damage and make sure they stay down until you're able to pick them up. All right, so let's go over to the carousel. Now, this is slightly interesting. I haven't seen it used a lot, but if you're on the carousel as Mad Eyes, I can see you and I can hit you. So look, I can see those um, little horses and I can hit you, knock you off and you get damage. 
The thing to mention about the carousel though, is that if you're at this little cipher area around here, I'm, I still may not expect you to be on the carousel because it's very rare that survivors actually get on it. So I've seen a few instances where they try to hide on there. It is not the best hiding spot. I would prefer if I were you to get into a locker than on the carousel, just because I can't hit you in the locker. But I've seen people use it and I haven't been able to find them just because I don't even think to look there. Teleporting over to the roller coaster, first stop. We're gonna get on like a survivor and go over to the second stop, like a survivor would when you're chasing them or whatever. So roller coaster is actually really good for Mad Eye, and here's why. Did you see that there was a second before I was able to actually get off that roller coaster there? Like I was slowing down. That's good for you. So someone gets on that area over there, and when you see them roller coastering, you get over here and then you draw that line while it is stopping, before they even have the ability to press the exit button, you can draw them and you can hit them. Another thing is that I almost always see them uh, get off on the side near the stop sign if I hit them, like it forces them off onto that side. I don't know if that's something in the game or if that's just like 99% of the time what happens, but I almost always see them come off on the stop side if I hit them with a wall. So I usually try to draw something to block the window while I do that. And then you can also draw other walls on top of here to trap them before they're able to actually escape and get away. Again, I'm sorry for the lag. It's because I want the darn particle effects. And yes, this is present during my rank matches. I don't care. I want the clout. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, so this little cipher here is nice. We got a console over here which can protect it. And we also got a secondary console over here which can protect both the cipher and the console pretty pog as these kids are saying these days strolling on over to tent i want to talk about the cypher that can spawn here in this little area so of course you have the main hole over the top of tent but there's also a hole you can see from this side so you come from this console here and you drag up and you can see that there's a little hole here it doesn't have perfect vision but it does give you a little bit of insight on the cypher and you can see survivors healing in here or doing other stuff it's just a little bit of extra vision again you can also drag over here when you're going to the console though you want to try to do an instant wall like this you won't see the cypher it will be highlighted blue so you will see the highlighted part but you want to try to draw that wall as fast as possible before survivors can run away and by doing that you can hit them but you might have to try to hit blind. All right, so now I'm gonna show you this chair. This is the Poggers chair. They was so Pog, they had to nerf it, actually. I'm not joking, they actually had to nerf this chair. It's very annoying. So we can body block this area. Every single hunter actually can. I don't see hunters doing this enough. This is very good, you should be doing this. I see this in a lot of good gameplay, pro gameplay. Body block that door. Survivors cannot get through here. They cannot get into that entrance at all unless they are like a priestess who's just going through the wall, a wilding which will push you out of the way. And there's like a few other exceptions I can't think of, but 99% of the survivors cannot enter this area at all to save. They are stuck and it hurts. Now, there's also the issue of the front entrance, which is what they had nerfed. You used to be able to press the console here and go down and draw a wall and it would last the whole 30 seconds. Now, it lasts one second, one whole second. If you do not know, this is the case for both of the bridges as well. They also last one second. It is not fun, but it is what it is. Again, the bridge with the cipher on it and the bridge right out here that comes to uh, working carousel will only have one second walls on them. The bridge at the very top does not. So keep that in mind. If you want to make a trap at that top bridge at the very, very top that's next to the actual boundary of the environment, do that. It's a good place to do it. But also, um, yeah. So I pretty much talked about everything on this map that I can think of. I'm going to move on. So, I am not a pro Mad Eyes or anything. I don't want people watching this to be like, Oh my gosh, Fern is so hot and sexy and awesome. I am. I am. But that's not related to the gameplay. That's a, that's a side note. That's a side... That's a... I'm only, I'm only here as an asterisk. Alright, boys. You spawn. Remember, go to the first console. There's a survivor generally around that area, but we go to the first console boom 
Uh, actually, I want to turn that off so you can see, but boom. There's probably going to be someone around here. Oh, see? See? Yeah, there you are. Usually they'll go to this site. Hello there. If they go to this cipher, which they're stupid if they do, but if they do, you do that. And then you just, like, chip at them. You know, chip at them like that. Just make the wall smaller and smaller so that way even if the first wall goes up they can't leave. And then this one actually connects over there too. So you can just do whoop. And just keep... It's a bit blind, but you'll, you'll figure it out. Yeah, see? And then you make your way over. I'm actually going to reduce fear though. Because I want them to be okay. So you got that one here. Around this general area. And usually there'll be a cipher. If there is a cipher over here, then they'll run over here. That's where Doctor's going. Somewhere in that direction. Or they end up going to this cipher over here. It takes them a bit, though. I also like to check the other areas. Sometimes you get someone down here. Yeah, there you are. This person right here. So the issue with this console. So we click it. It's got a long drag to it. Any survivor worth their weight in salt is going to avoid this. They just walk away. There's two consoles that overlap here. But look how long of a drag that is. Like, look. Uh... The survivor gets a notification the instant you touch that console, basically. Not the, they, they get a notification pretty darn fast when you're on those consoles and they see it and they're like, Aight, Bye Felicia, I'm out of here. Which is not good for you. And then you just want to keep your eye on the consoles which are close. See, like this is a close distance. This is a close distance. You want to check like that one fairly early too. In case around here. That's a good point, actually. I'm going to put that to the side. Uh, but, yeah, so there used to be another console somewhere, like, around here-ish. can't remember exactly, but, like, somewhere over there. And it covered this one. It covered this area right here. So you could protect this when the cipher popped and everyone was like, ooh, we're going to leave. You, know, you, could, you could guard it. You could guard that, and by guarding that, you could guard that. Well, now, they, you don't. So you got to be extra careful here. Hopefully, you'll have a win by the time the exit gates are open. If not, oof, um, you want to block it and then go one, two, and do the best you can. So you go here, you, you, block, sorry, you block it, and then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The exit gates aren't open, by the way, so it's not lasting as long, but it would be about eight seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. You might want to actually look at it around six seconds just to make sure. I don't know, Cupcake. I really don't know. <laughs> just to be sure that you got your stuff going well. Okay. And there's not really extra much to say here. Um, know where the dungeon basements things spawn. Keep your eyes on those. This chair is a nice chair, because you can go like, woo. You can go woo. You can go, if the survivor is coming like this way, they're coming like, like that, then you just go woo. You build a wall here, and you're good. Actually, not there, that was a mistake. If the survivor's coming this way, like, woo, I'm going in here, then you just build a wall, woo. This is a nice chair. This chair can be a nice chair. It's not actually as good, it's because those darn pallets. If you break a pallet, you can body block these areas with your thick body. And you just want to... Woo, woo, woo. Well, you got that, you got that. Uh, chairs that aren't super good. There was an... Alright, this boy. This baby boy. This baby boy. Now again, there was another console that interacted there. Now there is not. So you only have this one to do. And it, it's not a huge draw distance. Like you spawn here. You go over there. But there's not really much to work with here. Like what? How, like, how do you block a save? If someone's coming this direction, the only thing you can do is that. And even then they can just... This is the best you can do if they're coming from here. And then they just loop around. If they're coming from the back, if they were trying to hit you from the back, you do that, but then they just, it's, it's not the best place for Charon. I just know that, um, the places are good. Uh, if you're a survivor, this map is not the best map. It's not the worst map. Just go to that area where, you know, you're kind of blind. I'll show you how far you can get here. See that chair? Ooh. 
the best you can do. And you can't see the actual exit gate from there, but you can from here. Then you got a, uh, over here you got that chair. This is a darn good chair. You gotta make sure you position your thing right. It's a bit hard to do, because there's no console right here. But if you're able to, you can actually just, it's, I don't know why it's not drawing it right for me right now. But if you do something like that, you can block the whole thing off, which is good. The only issue is that it's got long draw distance to it. So you gotta want to do that when you know survivors are not directly right on you. Because if you got a survivor at this console, or cipher, and they're coming over to save, you're gonna have to be speedy McGillicuddy on that. Not much super to say about this area. It's nice, you don't have a lot of trees. You got trees, but look at these trees. Look at all those trees. They don't have leaves. But look look how nice those trees are. See, they don't block your view. They don't obstruct your view. You can see what's happening perfectly fine. Ugh, I love it. It's so good. Also, survivors never hide in here. I can see you from above. That's not common. It just happened one match. And I thought it was the funniest thing, because the survivor was, like, certain they were being hidden. They thought this covered over. It does not cover over. I can see you, and I can trap you. That was one time. One time, man. And... Yeah, don't do that. That's it. Alrighty, there's something I wanted to mention that I forgot to talk about last time, so you get to hear my beautiful voiceover again from my actual microphone. Wow. So sometimes there's a cipher here. Right here there is a cipher many of a time. And there's actually a really cool trick you can do in this area that I completely forgot to mention but is super duper powerful. So draw a wall here. The survivor at the console will try usually not to run outside. They'll try to run somewhere in that direction to avoid the wall. Then go over in this area on that console and draw a wall like that. By doing this you have blocked off the windows and the doors. So you go to your teleport, this is assuming you're not already in this area, and you teleport your way to the cipher in here. And you can hit the survivor, and you get 15 seconds before this wall next to the console goes down, next to the cipher. And then you just come back and you just redraw that wall in there. And it's so powerful. I've seen so many Chinese gameplays where this has been used. Like this is a very common strategy. Use this strategy. I don't know why I forgot to mention it before. I've used this. This has helped me so much. Do this. Do this. There's also another strategy you can do in the shack and hos uh, hospital. Yeah, which I'll talk about when I get there. But use these strategies. These are so powerful. These are so good. Mm, they're so yummy. Starting off at a hospital spawn, we're going to turn behind us and go to this console. Remember this console location because there's multiple spawns where you go to this one first and some of them it's not really highlighted. Alright, so there's someone at center, someone at shack. They actually spawn outside of shack and they usually run into shack, but I let the AI on for a second, which is why they're at the cipher. Then we have someone back here at this cipher. You got to be careful. They drain that console fast. And then we got someone over here. Alrighty, so now we know where everyone is. We check at center, we do a trap. If you ever see anyone at that cipher, especially if they're at the corner, that's what you're going to want to do. I'm going to get some presents real fast. Alrighty. And I'm just going to bring myself over here to show you a little bit better on that. So, see a little doctor back there? We go to that console and then we can trap her with it. Now, there actually used to be two consoles here. There used to be a console that spawned up here. It was on bottom story, but in that area. Yeah, well, we don't have that anymore because they nerfed it. So we don't have as much protection of like that chair over there or other areas. So when it comes to this cipher, we have to use this console and we have to protect this console. It's very important to protect this console. So say that someone spawns here and their first inclination is not to go to the console. If it is to go to the console, then we try to just hit them off the console and force them off of it. They usually will jump down a hole and then go somewhere safer. But anyway, if not, if they go to this console, do that. Do that wall right there. This is one of the best traps in the game. If they're decoding the side of this console, it is so good. Look at that. What you want to do is draw that wall on the outside and then uh, just keep making that trap a little bit thinner. So barely touch them with the side of the wall and then bring that wall closer inside. So that way when the, the 15 second limit because it's next to a cipher falls down, um, they're still trapped. Uh, it should happen any second now actually. Yes. So you see how that wall uh, just went down? Because we were staggering the walls next to her to keep going closer and closer to the big wall behind her, 
she's still trapped back there, which is good for us. But let's say that Mr. Nettie's himself really doesn't like you and decides to give you the cipher spawn down here. I hate this cipher spawn, and the reason why is that it's so easy for the walls to glitch like that. <laughs> look, look at this. Just, just watch this. Just watch this unfold. Every time, it hurts. None of them are hitting the ground. And I, I didn't start those on the, like, I started those in the area. So let, let, let me show you how painful this is. No walls on the ground. All above me. And to be fair, th there is a way to fix this. If you go down, you have to bring the camera all the way down as far as you can go. So that means that the cipher is no longer just barely in your vision, but it's like in the actual center of your vision. And then you can draw a wall like that and it will hit the ground, which is good. Yeah, you can draw a wall that lasts 15 seconds. You can easily block the cipher with that 15 second wall. Uh, the problem is you have to drag all the way down to do that 15 second wall block. So it's no longer an option for you to get a lucky periphery uh, hit, a hit from the side of your vision, like on some of those other ciphers where you drag it a little bit and then as soon as you get that uh, cipher just in your view, you do a wall and hit them. No, you have to like go the full distance on this. Also, if you get the, if you try to hit them, survivors get a notification and they will try to run from here down to the bottom story, somewhere where I can't see them. So it's really hard to hit them down here. I can hit down here if I start the wall on the ground like that, but again, I can't actually see them. So yeah. So besides that problem, we also have an issue with the holes here. Yeah. So if you want to draw a hole wall, you have to actually start it with your finger in the center of the hole and drag out like that. If you are even a little bit off like that, it will not work. Even if you think like that, that you're drawing the wall in the right place, oftentimes it does not work. You have to be very precise. And if you have fat fingers like me, like darn thick finger pads, it, yeah. It's, uh, I'd say it's a 50-50 if you actually get the wall when the survivor is jumping down it. You can hit it. You can hit a survivor jumping down a wall, but I would not bank on it just because of how inconsistent that is. But it's also just because I have like bad coordination there. Anyway, some other stuff we can do while we're here. You can block off the stairs. If you're physically chasing a survivor at the bottom story and you don't want them to get to top story, just block it off. You can also block off large sections of these areas here and just make little nice traps, which is good. You can do that in a lot of places on this map. And there's a hole. So you know what that means. If you saw this section with a uh, moonlit, you can do that little trap there. Or in this case, you want to actually go a bit further out and then something like that. And you got a nice trap. Bazinga, bazinga. Exactly how you like it. Just how you, sub, subway, just how you like it. All right, so now I'm over here. I've cut the clip and here I am. And there's a really cool trick you can do here. So I am mad eyeing about, I am being a mad eye. And oh no, there's a survivor in this building. Well, here's what you do. If they drain this console, which they can often do early game if you don't save it, they drain the console. What am I to do as a sad eyes? I go to this console, I go over. I can hit them with the wall. Keep in mind it would be highlighted blue, but because they finished the cipher, I can't actually see it. I would not be able to see the survivor because it would be blind and covered by the actual wood, but I would be able to see the outline of the building. Same with this cipher. I can do that uh, same thing here. I cannot see the survivor, but I can see the outline of the cipher. Anyway, so let's say I don't want to try to randomly hit them blind. If I want to do something a bit better, here's what you do. Go to that console, drag over here, and then start a wall under the window and to the other side of the door, like so. I could have started that a little bit closer to the window, but still this works fine. And then you can see how it's like a little blocked off area here. And then you go to this console, drag up in between the tree and the uh, actual foundation of the building, you do a wall. And would you look at that? You can't get out. So this is a really good trap for you to do. I'm going to try to redraw that wall because I did it a little sloppily. It still works, but to give you more range as an example, but bada bing. See, it covers the whole cipher here. So it's not guaranteed the survivor will stay in this trap when you draw the walls, but usually they won't run outside of the building. Some, sometimes they do. I can't say usually actually on that, but this is a really good trap if you're able to get it and you can teleport in here and then just hit them. 
I actually saw this on Chinese gameplay. I'm going to try to show that to you if I get the opportunity, if it's not too much work on my computer, which is struggling right now. But it is such a good trap. I've seen this used in a lot of gameplay, and I cannot stress to you enough how pog, as these kids are saying, how, how good this is to use. Yeah. Especially if you run out of energy in that cipher in the actual shack itself. Anywho... Let's move over to the chair. While I'm here, might as well throw that in. I hate this chair, personally. I mean, it's not the worst chair in the world. Like, at least you got a, well, a camera that can see it. But it's not my favorite, just because you have to do multiple walls to block it off. Like, I can't just block it off with one wall. The survivor can run around it. So it just wastes, uh, wastes more energy, and there's no overlap. This is a great chair, on other hands. And I'm going to show you why, in comparison, this chair is pog and the other one is not pog so if you remember watching my old body blocking guide which still works today by the way you would know that this is a great place to body block with if you're a hunter you body block this area and survivors can't come through here to save so what happens is the survivor they they try to run they have to use that window if they're coming from this area which means that they have to save on the right side and you can easily wall and block them off. Unless they're coming all the way down from that window, in which case you have ample time to either hit them with your main body or block them with a wall. But if not, then you just hit them and protect them from the right side. And it's such a nice way to use that body block strategy and your walls to minimize the amount of actual energy you're using. Unless there's a priestess or something. But yeah, if you, if you do have a priestess or... Maybe you just aren't able to get to the body block in time because they're too close to the chair. Then you can just do two walls. Really simple like that. And bada bing. Look how nice that is. There's also two consoles that overlap in this area. The console here. There's also a cipher here, by the way, which you can easily wall off. That's super nice. Like that. Always do the corner wall there. You're almost guaranteed a trap unless the survivor will run away from it. But I'm saying like if the survivor stays on the cipher, that's a trap. Okie dokie. Now let's say we got a survivor somewhere around uh, here and they're running over to the right. All right. So if they're doing that, you got a whole bunch of different traps you can do. Uh, just like draw a wall somewhere around here. It depends which way they're actually running. You know, you have to predict it a little bit, but something like that's a decent trap. Just make sure you have three seconds to work with between each wall. Again, one potato, two potato, three potato, one potato, two potato, three potato. One potato, two potato, three potato. One potato, two potato, three potato. Yeah, anyway, sorry about that. Just wanted to get the, the point in. But yeah, so there's a whole bunch of little traps you can do here. Whatever works floats your boat. Make sure that you keep in mind for the actual ciphers and consoles that... Uh, one second, let me open that little thingy. Whenever you're at this console and cipher, you can actually reach this console and the cipher in this area. So this console can bring you over to this cipher in console. See that? Quite simple. Uh, again, when you draw a wall here, make sure you do something like a corner like that, which will trap them in this area. They cannot escape behind those barrels. They will be trapped there. This is a great trap to do. And that console and areas over there can just be beautiful with that trap. I love that trap. All right, I cut a clip. I am now at this chair. Here's another good chair. So the cipher is actually not the best cipher because you have that long drag all the way down to the cipher. And then the other one is not the best either. But for the chair, if I can make my way over here, you get, you get a little bit of options here. So lagging a bit. Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, let's pop up my thing and watch this. I draw a wall. Buzzing. And look at that. Look at this. Boom. Solid object. Now the survivor has to walk around this area and they're forced to come to the pallet. I can try to block the pallet uh, with a weapon or draw this wall and then when they're running around it takes about three seconds one potato two potato three potato and then they're somewhere around there and i can just block them off it's about a three second w uh, run between the walls which really helps you with mad eyes just to make sure that you keep this lock um chair on lock that's what i meant to say chair on lock not lock on chair. I almost said lock on chair. That's stupid. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this console also protects this hiding area over here. So you can just uh, block off walls a little bit, windows. Nothing super crazy, but if you see someone kiting, just put a wall in there and say, yeah, you're not kiting today, actually. Uh, how about no? How about no? And this console protects this cipher that can spawn here. Again, do the little triangle thing. 
Uh, that's going to give you 15 seconds of time. It can also reach this console where the Merc is. Draw a corner wall and trap him like that. Corner walls. Corner walls. If you don't remember anything, remember that corners make good walls. Look at that. Fantastic. Gucci. Bazinga. Wh whatever those kids are saying these days, that's what this is. Phenomenal. And here's another helpful hint for um, getting survivors. So you see the mercenary here? The instant I touch on a console, don't forget the survivors get notified. So these, uh, like the little mercenary here or whoever it is, will usually try to run away from the cipher. Just like the instant they see me get on, they see the notification, they'll try to back away from the cipher. And you can actually use this to your advantage by drawing walls like a foot or so away from the actual cipher itself. So. I'm gonna try to bring myself over there and show you as an example what I'm talking about. So I am decoding, I am survivor, hello, I decode. I am doing decody things, survivor things. la di da di da Oh no, I get a notification. I have a notification, what do I do? I run away. I back away. I back away. Back away. You see, you see what I'm putting down here? Picking up what I'm putting down? Back away. Well, I'm on the console and I draw a wall about a foot away from the cipher if they're not in the corner or so, if I'm not trying to do a corner wall. So do it like a foot away from the cipher or something. And that way, when I get that notification and I'm backing away, like I'd be backing away right now. I actually back away and walk into the wall. It's like predicting a music note with violinist. I assume I don't actually play violinist. But yeah, like you're predicting, okay, the survivor's gonna walk backwards. So I will put a wall backwards that they might run and hit. Don't do that all the time. It depends uh, if you're used to the survivor and you see throughout the match that they tend to always do that. If they keep doing the same thing, you gotta punish them for that. Also, while we're here, this is a decent chair, not the best, uh, but a pretty good one. I'm sorry I'm going so fast, by the way, uh, but I, I need to get over a lot of stuff. So there's like a cipher over here sometimes, and there can also be a cipher around here, as you see. If you have someone at those ciphers, like a rescuer, it's not the best chair in the world because they're pretty darn close to it, but you still have a lot of options with this chair. For instance, there's like four ciphers they have to run through if they're from Shaq. And if they're from this area, they have to run through two different ciphers, which basically, I mean, I mean, I mean consoles, not ciphers. Basically, there's a lot of consoles with energy they have to run through to get to the chair if they're not directly next to it. Pardon. So what really benefits you is that if they do manage to escape that chair, they also have to get to one of these kiting areas, which you're pretty fast as Mad-Eye. If you take a good kiting build, you can hit them before they get away. Anyway, uh, center console here, not only good for that cipher, but also for projecting, protecting, protecting this chair. You can use little strategies over here. In fact, one nice one is someone's on the chair. They get saved. Now, what do they do? They try to run inside the building. They want to get from the chair inside the building because that's safe. I can't see you. Well, here's what you do. You can't do a wall on the stairs because, you know, stairs are sad, but what you do is you kind of corner this area off. Do something like that with a wall. Now the survivor is funneled this direction, unless they run back into me, in which case I can hit them. But yeah, so they're funneled back here, and then you can draw another wall that way, which will trap them as they're running, and then you do a wall behind them. Bada bing, bada boom, that's a pretty decent trap. I've used that a couple times. And if, if I have energy, you need to have the console energy to make that work is the main thing. Again, don't forget center cipher can also interrupt this kiting area over here. Nothing serious. Oh, I'm actually, huh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, but nothing like immense, but it's nice that you can cut off this area. And don't forget that if you down someone and trap them in walls, you can use the center console to uh, finish the job if you run out of energy a lot of the time. Now here's for the best chair in the game, the, the most poggers. The fantastic list, the amazing chair. I love this chair. You got two consoles, count it, two that overlap here. And look at that. You just, uh, there's a little bit of a mess up. But the whole point is that you just do one wall and it's protected. And then, oh, it's so nice. Oh, it's so nice. You just vault that wall. You're protected. You got two things of safety. Just make sure they don't escape. Just don't let them off the darn wall.
radio. I disconnected, so I just logged back in. Sorry about that. Anyway, this is our spawn, and we're going to go directly forward to get to the console. See that console right there? If you actually back up, it's not highlighted because technically it's not the closest. See, it's in this range right here. Uh, actually, the closest console is that one behind us, but I would not go there because you have to walk all the way around the walls, making it actually a little bit further. So just walk over to this one. It's technically the closest. Then from here, we check our spawns. So we sp uh, started over there. Our spawns are going to be back in this corner. Hello. Uh, we're going to go over towards here near center, and there should be... Where are they? Uh, oh, okay. There they are. Hello there. And then we should also have someone near uh, this area. Oh. Hello, they finished the cipher. I guess that's because I disconnected. <laughs> yeah, should have someone here. This is also a great place, by the way, because you can do a little wall like that. Pretty nice. Look at that. Gorgeous. Remember, corners are your best friend in this game, and lockers are not as mad eyes. Uh, if I'm harassing you and I have energy, if you're a survivor, hide in the locker. I will not be able to hit you. Keep in mind, I can try to put walls outside to trap you in that area. <clears throat> Pardon. And there are two consoles that overlap here, so I can trap you here, but walls will last 15 seconds. Just be careful in this area. It is a long drag to get there. Also, we have this area, which is not a spawn for where I am specifically, but actually over in that corner, if I spawn there, then there's going to be a survivor spawning here. And I just like it because the, um, the console's right next to the cipher. It's a quick, easy way to access it all. Now for the stair bears, it's mostly just stairs. In fact, there actually are no bears. I hate stairs. I mentioned that to you before. I hate walking. I hate climbing. I hate effort. And I hate them in Mad Eyes. So you see that wall? The wall does not go through the window. I mentioned this in my first Mad Eyes guide video, but I don't want to make you have to watch everything over again. So to summarize everything here, I hate stairs. Walls can only be placed at one elevation. So sometimes they're just going to glitch out like that. There are instances where it will work if you hit it the right way. Um, I think like this is going to work here if I do it. Yeah. But don't bank on that because sometimes if you're doing a wall fast, it just won't. The best thing to do is simply start your wall um, not in this direction. See how that didn't work? But from inside the building. Start your wall from inside of the actual building and then do it outside like this. That will work 100% of the time. So always do that. Make stairs. So go from the higher to lower. Higher to lower if you're dealing with stairs. That's a good rule of thumb. So this area over here is a window. It has stairs on the outside and stairs on the inside area, sort of. If you have someone kiting through here, you can block off the area with walls. Now let me show you where this can go wrong. So this area here see how this wall is not placing you have to n be very precise with this so either set this up early or just get muscle memory of exactly how long you need to place this wall because if you go an inch farther further farther for it won't work but yeah so we got this wall and then from the outside here as you can see we draw that wall it does not go oh, i think i misclicked that wall does not go through and to the inside see so you don't want to bank on that if you have a survivor here. Stairs are bad. We don't like them. Instead, what you do is you go over here and you can do a little trap on the outside. And then they're trapped in this corner. You can also do a similar trap on the other window, which I forgot to show. But um, just know that you can, if there's a corner, you can sort of do a trap like this. Now here, there are stairs going up to the altar. You see those stairs? Yeah. Yeah, that will happen. That is why you can't draw the wall out here because of the stupid stairs. Mad Eye has arthritis. He doesn't like stairs. I don't like stairs. I don't even have arthritis. Yet I live like on the third floor in my apartment thing. But I still don't like stairs. Stupid stairs. Yeah, I hate you. I'm talking to you. Anyway, now that the dungeon's like literally right, or base, basement, dungeon, whatever you call it, thingy is right next to us. I'm just going to show you what I like to do here. So you can fall and do a double hit. And then you can also protect this area. So what I do is I get on the console. A lot of people will do something like that. This does not work. So you see, you go in here, you crawl out. Do not put the wall outside. Put the wall inside inside of the building. I actually have a video of this on my YouTube from earlier, a, a Mad-Eye video where I display doing this exact strategy in matches. 
and it helps me out a lot. You can actually go watch those old videos. But yeah, so you put a wall on the stairs. You can try to fall in and get a double hit, like the basement strat. Boom, boom. And it also helps from a lot of other areas. Just put a wall behind it before it goes down. Remember, it does have shorter time thanks to it being next to the console and next to the chairs, etc. So you want to be about fat, a pretty, <laughs> you want to be fast with it. I'd say about five seconds between each wall, if I remember correctly. That's a safe bet. So like that. And then you get someone on the chair, you hit them, you go up the stairs, you hit them with your uh, weapon. And then you get on real fast, you draw another wall, and then you hit them again. That's the strategy. Watch my old video if you're curious. Right, yo, folks. I'm not British. I don't know why I did that. Where's that Australian? Oh, yeah, okay, here, here. This used to be a blind spot. You could not see in that corner because there was a, this console here used to not be here. It used to be, uh, where was it? Uh, here, it used to be here. That console used to be here and you could reach all the way down, but you could not actually get to the corner. You could not see this corner area. And now I'm going to go show you some chairs that I like. This chair is a pretty good chair. There used to be an extra console here to protect it. It is not here anymore. So you have to use this corner console. It's still a decent chair though, unless there's a survivor inside your tinnitus range and they save before you do the walls. But yeah, you can just put like two walls around this area, mess around, have fun, get a coffee, get a job. Um, get married, have kids, go to Colorado, retire, uh, have grandkids. You can have a whole life. Now let's talk about this basement area. I love this basement because I can body block this door, survivors can't enter. And then you can do a wall like that. And then survivors can't enter through the back. Now I'm making mad eye noises, mad eye, harassing sounds, mad eye, mad eyeing, mad eyeing, ah. And then you do another wall and that's nice. The only thing is if you chair the survivor and you hear tinnitus, meaning that there's a survivor like right behind you about to save, which survivors will often instant save against Mad-Eye, just because if he has the ability to block you with walls, it's terrible. Instant saving against him is common. Uh, then don't do that because it's going to take too long to get up to that area. This is a blind spot for Mad-Eyes. They actually made it even worse by moving the consoles. Do you see how much of a blind spot this is? Let me... Dude, y you can't... You, you can't even see me. You can't even see me here. Call me John Cena because you can't see me. The, if you're going to heal a survivor, this is where you go. All right. Now uh, there's a chair location over here. Sorry I'm going so fast, by the way. <laughs> and uh, you can block that off from this area, this area. It's a nice chair location. I like it because you got this one console over here. And you can also protect that chair over here. And then from this console, not only can you protect your chair in that area, but also this chair. So you get like doubles from both sides, double dutch, it's great. And then this console can also protect this chair, which if I can make my way over, this chair is the best chair on the map. The best chair on the map. The best chair on the map. I don't know why that was hovering in the air. But what you do, you do that wall corner. If the survivor's in here with you, you can hit them. You can uh, try to hit them with walls or whatever, and then you get right back, uh, you do a bit of harassing, and then you do another wall. Uh, about five seconds. Bada buoy. Brilliant. Uh, the only thing you want to remember is that for these walls, you got to be careful when you aim them. If there's a cowboy, he can actually counter you here. Anyway, um, so you got this console here and this cipher, which are now close together thanks to the spawn. And do you see that red chest? Well, you can actually get a survivor decoding there and you can use that red chest as a physical object to trap them. This is a very, 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 very common trap because um, out of all the ciphers, this is pretty darn close and people for some reason don't think about the box being able to block you off. It's not the most in the world. And again, you can always do the corner areas on this place around here. Hello, corners. You, can, uh, you can't do corners here at all, sadly, and you can't do corners here, making them a bit weaker. You can do corners where this cipher spawns. It's not here now, but it can spawn there. Hello, bada boo. And you can do corners here. This is also a blind cipher. You click that cipher, you see it's highlighted blue. Hit blind. Do not drag over. Hit blind instantly, and then only drag over to actually see that console. 
if you see damage at the top right. Because you can just draw a line there and hit in that general vicinity. And if you see damage, then it's worth your time. If you don't see damage, there's probably no one there. All right. Um, also, here's something I want to show you that's actually useful on every single map in the game, but I just did it here as an example. Say I have trapped a survivor in a corner. They have been trapped. -eth. I've, I've set this up for your convenience. I vault the wall. Mad Eye is actually very thick in his shoulders in the fact that survivors are too th um, too large to get between those gaps in between me and the wall. If you do not move the second you vault a wall, it is impossible for survivors to escape. And see, you can just keep hitting with your physical attack, and it's great. There's a few instances where it doesn't work, and that's only if for some reason the wall messes up because of, like, stairs or something. Anyway, here's another example. Say I it's a larger area, and I can't just hit them by standing still. I draw a wall behind me, and then I can proceed forward after having vaulted. That is the strategy. Alrighty, and that's about all for this map. Sorry I wrap, uh, wrapped that so fast. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, honestly, there's not much to say about this map. Um, I hate this map. I really don't play this map almost ever. And there's there's gonna be like that one person out there that's like, oh, I love Lakeside Mad Eyes. You know, they played it in a COA match. Yeah, and you know the reason they played it in COA was because the other team knew that they had a Mad Eye main, so they specifically chose Lakeside just so they couldn't get a good map for him. Like it was specifically to counter him. It was not like he chose to play it on Lakeside. I've heard people say, yeah. And you know what? Maybe you do like it on Lakeside. Good for you. But it's um, most people, most mains don't like it. I've looked on like Chinese gameplays on Billy Billy. On you can look on YouTube and find them. I'll link sources. Try to find a gosh darn Lakeside. If you find it, it's gonna be rare. And if you do find it, the gameplay is most likely going to be. Um, if it's a win, the survivors probably kind of did it to themselves. Is all I'm saying. Let's look at the map here. You see this map? L let's let's look over here. Look over in this area. Look how long you have to drag to get to the exit gate. Do you see that? Darn. That that is a pretty long time. And then at the other area, we also have a little bit of a drag here, which at least we can see the exit gate better than that one spot on uh, <laughs> River Park. But it's still a huge drag. Like, ugh. So that that is just a, one thing that's not nice. But then there's more stuff. So like, let's let's try to look at this cipher over here. Do you see how long we have to drag to get there? It's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's and you can try to block it off, sure. But the thing is, then survivors can just go under the boat, and it's like you can't even see under the boat. Look at that, they just go right down there and it's blind. Almost everything under the boat is blind. It's blind. And yeah, you can block it off, but like, come on. There is a strat you can do on this map. I mentioned it, I think, in my old video a little bit. Uh, there's a chair on the front of the boat. You can block off the stairs and that's a decent chair to use, but it's still not that good with everything else. And you can hit at the bottom story like that, but it's... You gotta be precise, it's not worth it. But again, that chair right there is like the only good thing on this map. Um, over here, we have shack, which we can't see in, because they said, you know what, we have one building which you can't see in, the ship. What if we had two? Two for the price of one! Brilliant! And then they said, you know what, you know what, what if we had trees? What if we had trees? With leaves! What what are those little green things on the trees? What do you call them? What do you call those little green things? We call them leaves. And you can't see through them. They actually obscure your vision. You might not have known that. And there's trees everywhere. Like, I've gone to three consoles and there's been trees on every single one. Look at this. I can kind of see inside this one if I, like, angle my camera a certain way. Ooh. Yeah, because I'm going to have the time to do that. And, but you can't see into all of them. Look at that. See? That was just like a one tree thing. And there's like three of them in just that one console area. Like 99% of this map is a blind spot. M most maps you get one, maybe two blind spots. This map said, you know what? What if everything was a blind spot? Yeah. 
And then, okay. If you actually want to play this map, here's what you do. You're supposed to do. Uh, focus on beach. Focus on the cipher that can spawn here. The, basically, focus on the beach side part of the map. Everything near the front. Like this area as well, kind of. Don't focus back here as much. Don't focus on the back side because like, you see how long of a drag it is to get to this cipher. There's another cipher in the back left corner of the map that takes forever to get to. It's ridiculous. There are a lot of smart players that know how to utilize this map. Um, I just don't like to play Mad Eyes here, so I'm afraid I can't help you as much. Sorry. Here we have the map, the myth, the legend, Leo's memory. This used to be one of the best maps in the game, and now it is not exactly. Yeah. Anyway, if we do spawn here, then, um, well, it's not actually one of the best spawns. What we're going to do is go behind us straight to the console, and then we're going to want to go back and look for the two people somewhere in the main building. So we click here, and they should be... Oh, a notification there. Um, where are they? They should be somewhere around there. I paused the AI. Uh, wait. Sorry, I was just going back for a second. All right, somewhere... Oh, there you are. Hello. I don't know why I'm blind today. And where's the other folk? Uh, I don't remember how long I had AI thing unpaused, so I, I'm a bit... Oh, oh, hello. There you are. So, two people generally around this area. And then you're going to have someone up here vibing about in shack you can't see them i'm gonna try to hit it to prove uh did i miss it all right let's try that again real fast boom all right see there we got doctor right there so we got someone here and then we got another person okay by the logs that's where they are so those are the main spawns for this area I already mentioned it, but this is kind of a bad spawn place. So here's what I mean. We have someone in shack. Now that is a long drag. Look at that. It's a, wait, long drag before I'm actually able to see them. Long drag. And by the time I get to them, they're going to run away. And then you want to try to blind hit like that. But the thing is, it's also, as I said, a blind hit. You also have a long drag for this spawn between the console and that cipher. And between the console and this cipher in case they go to that direction because they can go to either cipher but it's still a long drag kind of annoying but yeah it's it's the best you can do with that console wish it had better coverage also um there can be a cipher that spawns here so if you have this spawn with the survivors they could go to that cipher which is actually pretty decent because that person has this console over here guarding them and it guards that cipher as well you want to protect that console uh, that's a very important console to have. Don't forget because two people spawn around the big building, you can have someone go to the little cipher right outside and then someone might also try to run to that cipher. It might take them a second, but that's just one potential place they could go to. Mentally prepare yourself because I'm about to show you what I call the cancer path. But first we have to actually talk about this exit gate so that you can understand why this path is so terrible. So this exit gate right here is very, very, very annoying. The reason why is because it's almost a blind spot, essentially a blind spot. So if we get, um, let me get some presents actually so I can see and then move over. We can interact with that console with the little keypad area there. See? But look how long of a distance that is. Survivors get a notification the instant you get on and they always run away. Yeah, so you're probably not going to hit them there. And here's the other thing. You see? You see how long of a drag that is? You notice you don't see the entire door? Well, there's also a console down here, which overlaps with a little bit of the door at the tippity top right there. So all survivors have to do is run two inches away from the darn keypad and they're completely safe and then I have to change consoles but then they just run two inches back up and then I have to change consoles again it takes me like four seconds to move the console all the way to them so it's gonna waste my time terribly I won't be able to hit them at all essentially not only that but this is all reliant essentially on the main console right here because this is the only one that can touch the keypad so if survivors drain this console I, I can't do anything. And none of, see this console I'm on right now? It can't even reach that one. It can't protect it. Nothing right now protects this console. There used to be another console that did protect it, but they removed it because lol, Nettie's hates us. But that also opened the door for the terrible evil path, which I will show you in a second. So not only can you almost not hit this door at all, 
let's uh do we have this let me use my map this path i'm walking right now that i'm going to be walking is a path that if you walk as a survivor and you just run straight through it'll be near impossible for me to hit you on i can hit you but it is so far away from every single console that if you're running fast enough and you just get between the console zones, it'll take me, by the time I'm able to move the console over to where you're standing, I will not be able to hit you because you'll be in the next zone already. This whole path I'm walking right now, you can see on the, on the little map right there. This is evil because once the exit gate pops, um, pardon, once the last cipher pops, they just run down this path straight to the exit gate it's like a huge path that goes almost halfway across the darn map straight to the exit gate and there's nothing i can do with the consoles i have to be there on foot or waste my teleport or there's nothing i can do if you're smart as a survivor and it's just it just hurts man it just hurts because basically on this map you have to get people dead before the exit or else they're going to use this like look, look, look see Imagine I'm running down that line, and now I have to switch consoles to hit where I would be. I'd be somewhere near that area where the line is, but by the time I dragged over there, I'd be in a completely new position. So it basically, it's just nearly impossible to hit you on that line if you're smart as a survivor, which is what I hate. I hate that so much. I mean, you can kind of counterplay it, but still... If, you, if you're smart and you're able to kill all the survivors beforehand, it's not a problem. But I don't like having to use my teleport endgame if I don't get those kills just to counter that. Yeah, I'm complaining. Let's, let's be positive. Let's talk about this cipher. This cipher is a positive. I mentioned it a little bit before. You got this console here, which can protect it. And then you got this console here, which can protect it, which is nice and happy. But not only that... Not only do you get this nice protection zone, but these consoles also help you in other situations. Hence, um, if I can walk over here in a second, let's get over here. And now I can talk about how the actual consoles help us. So we get over here, we get on this console, and say we're a survivor. We're decoding this area or whatever, and then we run up the stairs. Well, what you can do with these consoles is actually block the, in front of them while they're running up, and then while they're running forward, you block behind them. Remember, it's three seconds before you're able to do the walls, like three seconds per wall. I believe about two seconds if you use overclock, but you can use that to block them and trap them in there. I use that all the time myself. Uh, the best counter to it, if you're a survivor, is simply do not ever go up these stairs, ever. Bunch of things you can do you go over here draw a wall basically you get it just like anywhere you can draw a wall here you can trap them just so many different places to trap survivors uh, keep in mind that there is an exit here they can jump off the stairs so if you ever see them climbing up the stairs make sure you draw the wall behind them or like behind them over here as long as they're past that general point and they're going up then they're stuck going forward, then you move consoles, and you can do whatever you want. You want to block it here, you can do that, here, there, here, there, anywhere. There's also a looping area near the back of this map down here with the pallets. You can use walls and block off these little areas, so that way if you want to chase on foot, that's not going to be a problem for you, or at least as much of a problem. Which is nice, cutting off little kiting routes is always welcome, and it's something that you should get um, accustomed to doing. You're whenever you have to physically chase because there will be times where you have to physically chase even if you're going chip build There will be times making sure you block off those areas before you have to do it is gonna help you so much so much Ugh, Look at that nice little trap here Yeah, I'm probably gonna mention this later But if you even if you have chip build what you want to do is try to get half damage And if you can't get full damage because you often won't be able to you're gonna want to teleport to them and then try to chase them until you get that down. Also, this cipher, you can do a corner here. Corner trap is so nice here in this area. So beautiful, so beautiful corner trap. Um, this is a strong area because the console is so close to the cipher. Now, from my experience at this console, trying to hit this cipher, it's actually a little bit harder to do a corner wall with, and that's specifically because of the distance you have to drag over there, and you just want to hit as fast as you can, so you can't always be precise enough to get a little corner. But you can still try to hit it and just do the best you can there. Keep in mind that this lower console overlaps with this console, and this console right here that I'm highlighting is the one that gets that corner 
cipher, the one that gets the ciphers related over here, and the one near the upper logs at the top left. So you can still hit that console, even though that console can't hit the cipher. Yeah, so we're at the back corner now. This is a nice place to try to do a quick hit on. It is a little bit of a drag, but you can do a trap with those barrels in the corner there, which is nice. Um, let's see if I can get myself over there. Taking my way downtown, something fast, something homebound. Do 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 do. All right, we're over here. Um, so you got that little trap back there in that corner. Nice little place right there. Uh, don't forget if you're in this cipher, it is a nice quick drag to get here. So what you want to do is make sure that you try to drain that uh, console if you are the survivor, because right now it's the only one that overlaps here. There used to be two, but they removed it because Nettie said, what if we didn't like Mad Eyes and we just made him sad? And they did that. They made him sad. Thank you, Nettie's. Also of important note, I am playing Blonde Eyes right now, which is the best Mad Eye skin. <laughs> it was a, a limited logic path one, I think actually, but it, it's so stupid. It's so ugly. I, I hate it so much that I unironically love it. Same with the caterpillar skin and the cat boy mad eye skin, which is the lion one. They're so ugly that I just love them. Get, get another character with ugly skins like that. Bet you won't find it. Bet you won't. Also over here, we got a cipher that's perfect for corner wall. There is a window, which is a bit annoying. So you can try to do a smaller wall. Um, but if you're at the front of the cipher or the left side, then doing a smaller wall which blocks off that window is not going to help as much. But yeah, just try to get a hit there. It's a nice corner. You can sort of use that depending on where you're decoding. Again, if you're a smart survivor, don't decor decode in the corner. Get as far away from corners as you can if you're smart. In, in good gameplay against Mad Eyes, you never see them in a corner cipher. Never. Only people who aren't familiar with Mad Eyes decode, decode corner ciphers. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're prepared because now I'm going to talk about the evil window strategy. Evil for survivors, not for Mad Eye. This is sad for Mad Eye. It's not fun for Mad Eye. So we have someone in the chair. Say they were like kiting, meandering about, and we trapped them and we put them in here. Now, it's not a bad chair. You can block off a lot of areas and you have multiple consoles that cover over this chair. So it's nice. And you can block off the doors and stuff. We, we, we like that. That is good. Here's the problem. If someone gets out of this chair and they run towards the window, you are stuck. You might say, oh, just don't let them get out of the win uh, the chair. You would say that, but sometimes things happen. You get stunned. You know, if you have a good survivor, they're going to try to be able to rescue. You can't always block a save. So if they do get out of the chair, they come over, they vault the window, and then they run towards where I'm standing now. If I can move the camera down. Do you see this crate? They run right behind that crate area. So the issue is... Once you escape and you get over to this area and you run out the window, you, first of all, have a really long uh, movement with the console to hit here. And then second of all, if you proceed forward to the actual crate, you are in a blind spot and I cannot see you. This is a very common route for survivors to escape from if they're in this area by the chair. Um, if this happens, you have to chase them on foot. You cannot rely on your console to get them unless they stupidly run out of the blind spot and into somewhere like over here where, oh, hello, uh, somewhere over here where there's a full console. But here's the thing. If the survivor knows that that's a blind spot, they're going to know that there's a console over there. Like if you're smart enough to know that, then you're smart enough to know the console. So yeah, I hate this spot. Uh, it's not that fun. This was here since the beginning of the game. I would not have minded the blind spot if they didn't also recently remove two consoles and make that huge, horrible um, escape route to the exit gate for end game, late game, and then they removed a few other console stuff as well, which is not fun. So it's, it's just like the cherry on the unsavory cake. Yeah. And now let's say they run over in this direction after getting out. It's still, uh, that was a misclick. It's still a long drag over here to, to find where I am and to hit me. See where I am? It's still a decent drag, which is kind of annoying. It's it's a good route if you're a survivor. If you're Mad-Eye, it makes you not the happiest Mad-Eye in the world. One might call it a sad eye. Anyway, um, it can be a console over here. Do the corner thing. Block it off, 15 seconds, bada buoy, bazinga. And since the topic of blind spots is already on the mind, I'm going to cut a clip here and teleport over 
to the exit gate area. One second, and here we go. All right, so this corner over here is also a blind spot. Not the exit gate, I can see the exit gate, but the corner is a blind spot. Boop. And I'm gonna show you that once I get on my little portable console over here. Do, 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 do. It is a bit of a drag to the exit gate, but that's not the huge problem. The problem is this area over here. Eh. Now, technically, like I just did, you can make a trap here, but the thing is, if there's someone in the corner, you have to already know that they're in the corner before you can do that trap. I don't really use that corner trap much ever because I don't ever see anyone in the corner. Um, I'm sure people go there sometimes to heal, but I just don't see them doing it. But it's just something you you can know that it is a blind spot. All right, so I thought to bring this up here because I'm going to have to bring it up somewhere. It doesn't really matter where, but uh, kiting for survivors. Do not transitional kite. If I'm out mad-eyeing, drawing walls like this, ooga, that's taking up energy. That's going to take a certain amount of energy. You can't see it right now because I'm in practice mode, so it's not actually using energy in practice mode. But it would normally use energy. So if I am harassing you and you're a survivor, do not leave the area because I am losing energy when I'm looking at you in that area. And eventually, I will run out of energy. In fact, if I'm actively hitting you, that can take a couple of seconds because I usually don't start off with full all the time. But if you try to transition to that area over there, for instance, then I can just hit you with this console. If you try to go over to like this kiting area, which I've seen survivors do, uh, don't do that. Um, that's not something people who are practiced against Mad-Eye will do. Try to stay in the same area unless you are literally forced away. Like you're forced away because I'm right about to trap you or something. Or if you're in an area that has like three different consoles covering it, which I would like to show you, but I don't think this map has any serious areas like that. But like, um, I can't think of one right now. But there's some places that have multiple console coverage where you know it's not worth it to stay there just because I'm going to keep using consoles. They overlap. But yeah, um... Don't transitional kite. I know that's not common. A lot of hunters you have to transition with. Mad Eye, do not. You'll run into an area where I have full console and I'll be able to harass you more. Unless you just know your teammates so well and you're in voice chat and your teammates are telling you, hey guys, this area over here has uh, no console energy left. But that requires a bit of teamwork. I also, there can be a cypher spawn here. It's a great trap you can do. Look at that. Nice little trap. Um, again... Only this console covers that area, though. You gotta protect it. It is a bit of a drag. <sighs> Pardon. So it's a bit annoying, but yeah. Sorry I'm talking so fast, by the way. I'm just trying to get in a bunch of information without making this video terribly long. Also, that console can protect that console, but only that console that's closest to us right now can protect this area. And I'm sorry for the lag, but I really want the darn particle effects. I do what I gotta do. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's a nice console. Protect that good old boy. And um, also, the console over here can overlap. I said that. What am I forgetting? I feel like there's something important I'm forgetting. This console's important. It protects that console and the cipher in here. Oh, 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 okay. I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember. All right, over here. See me? See me? As mad eyes, do you see me? Do you see me? All right, now you see me, now you don't because I'm under a wall. This is a blind spot. You can hit here, see, um, if I can get out of, you can see, I, you can hit under here, but you cannot see me. So this basement is terrible because you cannot actually see the basement unless you're just trying to get double hit. And also, even when I drag over here, it's a blind spot. It's evil. Um, be careful about that. And not only is that a blind spot, but the area under the stairs. So I'm survivor. I'm running up. Ah, I want to escape. Well, what you should actually do as a survivor is not run up the stairs, but run and then jump off the little area to the left here. Like whoop. And the reason why is if I can get to my little console here, everything under this area over here is a blind spot. So I can try to draw a blind wall and say, oh, maybe he's next to the area over there, but uh, I can't actually see you. Like I can if you're actually on top of the stairs when I can block you off. If you're under here, I can't see you. I just have to kind of guess where you are. So um, yeah, survivors don't actually commit to going all the way up the stairs. Again, you can also actually go over to this section, which is still a blind spot. 
because uh, if I go over here, t -t 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 -t, you still can't see me. <laughs> yeah, and then even from the other console over here, you still can't see me. Maybe if you move the console in a certain area, but still, like, it's a... Uh, it's kind of annoying, actually, but just because so many times if a survivor is on the stairs, they fall down there and it's just pain. But hey, um, this map is overall not that bad. It would be a lot better if they didn't remove those two consoles and make the evil escape route that I feel is unnecessary. And by removing those consoles, they made it a lot harder to hit um, ciphers such as the cipher inside of Shack, which now you only have one console to be able to hit the shack with, which first of all, you can't even see inside shack for the most part, except for through this tiny hole, which you never use. Because the thing is you just try to do a blind hit, a scroll and blind hit. You don't have time to try to find their perfect position in the hole, just blind hit. And if you see damage, good. If you don't, don't worry about it. Don't forget, um, you wanna check on those blind areas if you see the cipher wiggling. You can see the blue ciphers wiggling if a survivor is working on it. And then you know for a certain someone's on the cipher and you know it's actually worth it to waste your time on it. Uh, but yeah. Alrighty, here we are at Eversleeping. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I do not know this map that well. It's just because everyone has like their maps that they purposely like really love and some they just don't like. I know this map objectively used to be one of the best before the nerfs on it. I just personally wanted to play other characters here. It was just a personal thing, but it is a good map. So if we go to the spawn, um, we have someone around here. All right, hello there. And then we should actually have two people around there. So where's that other person? Uh, I can't remember when I paused it. It should be, oh, hello, there they are, right over here. All right, so we got two people there, and then we're gonna have um, one of those people go to that cipher usually. And hello, oh, that was the tram. <laughs> and then this cipher is usually taken somewhere by that person if they're in the spawn, just I guess it could vary though. And then we have someone under this little tarp thing or whatever you call it. And we should have someone, oh, hello, there they are. But they're usually gonna go all the way down there to that little cipher. And that's the general spawns for this place. If you're curious as to how I know these spawns, um, a lot of it's just practice with Mad Eyes. The more you use him, the more familiar you get with him. For instance, I know the spawns with Mad Eyes, but even though it would be the same with Joseph, I still struggle with him just because I'm not used to walking to them on foot, for instance. So it's like a mental thing. Also, what you can do is before you actually get into a match in the early areas when you're getting into the training mode, there's an option for you to view every single spawn for the maps, which really helps you in memorizing them. So that's just something I like to do. As for map features, we do have a two-story area over here that you have to drag this console over to see. Do you see how that cipher is highlighted blue? It's because it's not completed and you can kind of see it and do a blind hit on it. Again, because it's so far away, you're going to want to try to hit it before you actually get this full vision of it. So like we click over here, we drag, and then you would hit sometime around here, like right then, because it's just going to take a whole extra second or so before you're actually able to get it completely 100% into view like that. See? And it's not going to promise everything is going to be fine, but you're going to be able to block it off a little bit. Also, there is a window here. Um, yeah, that goes down, which means you can do a, a trap out here. I would be a lot more careful with that trap. Uh, let me try to get over here. I don't use this trap as much. It's not that common, especially because there's that hole right here. So survivors can often just drop down the hole if they see you. So this is not as common, but just so you know it exists and it is an option, you technically can do the wall here. But again, I don't do it much and I don't even use Mad Eye on this map much, even though he's pretty good here, but yeah. You might want to make the wall a little bit further out to be consistent though, because I think that was cutting in a bit close. Moving over to this area, we have a nice little cipher that we can block um, with the corners or just block in general. If I can teleport over here, I can show you. The console is right next to the cipher and that is so nice, I love it. You, you just, you, you can just block it off so quickly, so fast. Most survivors will not decode this cipher just because they can see the console is there and they know it's very dangerous because of that or they will uh, drain the energy in the console, but they have to be really, really, really fast on draining that energy because I can quickly snap over to that console and they better have like have it drained before I'm on it or else I can hit them off it. When I say have it drained, I mean you have about, 
I think they nerfed it from five to three seconds. You have to be on the console for three seconds before I'm unable to interact with it, if I remember correctly. Anyway, um, there's also a cypher that can spawn in graveyard. Uh, pardon, you can block that as well. Tut, 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 moving over here to the exalt gate area. And if I can check, all right. So this exit gate, this little, this little gate over here, uh, we have a console which can reach over. There used to be more, but they removed it. So now we can hit the exit gate, but it is a bit of a drag, which is annoying. Also, this chair is also a bit annoying as well because of the drag. So you can't reach it with this console, so you only have that one console to the left over here. Oh, pardon. That can be used. Again, yeah, you can block it off. Not my favorite area. You also can't see under these... Um, that building there but you can draw a wall to at least block it off which does help or at least traps the survivors in it you know give a little get a little pick 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 a lot pick a little more pick a little good uh pick a little pick a little pick a little pick a little pick 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 a lot pick a little more pick a little pick a little pick a little pick a little pick 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 i just got that song stuck in my head could if you know what song i'm referencing you get imaginary money all right, also a really nice thing about this map, which makes it popular, is that there are so many ways that you can just block off corridors and your walls actually matter. Like survivors can't just walk around that. <laughs> they, they get stuck and it's, that's, what makes, that's what makes this place good. You would think that that would, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, sorry. You would think that that would also make him strong on Chinatown. Four man, flawless round, just got matched in Chinatown, but it would not, committing suicide, sorry about that, but it would not make him strong, and the reason is because Chinatown has these umbrellas that cover a large amount of the map, and then there's so many buildings in Chinatown that you just literally cannot see inside of. I don't think I'm going to do a whole section on Chinatown, just because it is fairly new, and I don't know it that well myself to give a fair input on it. But from what I can tell, Chinatown is a pretty bad map just because there's so many things you can't see. Anyway, um, over here, sorry, uh, we got a basement. You can't really see the whole basement, but you got one. Uh, stairs here. What you're going to do is block off the stairs if survivors are trying to escape from you. And you can also block behind it. Again, three seconds between those walls intervals, wall, wall, in wall intervals. And then you can also try to block off over here, but it's not as important if you block down there because they can either go down the hole or out the window over here. So they have like two escape routes once they're inside the building. And then they have the other window all the way back in the corner here as well. So yeah, let me actually show you those wall times just so you can see them. So we scroll over to the corner here and we can do something like one potato, two potato, three potato. 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 All right, the reason I'm sorry I did so many of those, but I'm just like really trying to drill it into you that this is what it is. In fact, I'm gonna try to use a uh, show that over here. Uh, so it's like, wait, no, so one potato, two potato, three potato, and then you can draw that wall. So as, whenever you're doing a trap like that, just make sure that there's three seconds before they're able to escape. Unless you're using overdrive, in which case it's two seconds. Um, let me see if I can actually show you that. Let me get my presence to get overclock, overdrive. I always confuse the name. It should be called overclock. That sounds cooler. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> actually, I should know that. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go over here, actually test it. And one potato, two potato, three potato. One potato, two potato, three potato. Now clicking it. Uh... Yeah, one potato, two potato, one potato, two potato, one potato, two potato. Do you see how that went? And now it's off again. So it's about two seconds on overdrive versus three seconds on the other thing, if you're curious. Uh, you really just need to feel the distance between survivors getting hit with a wall. And by that, I mean, when you draw a wall, you have to predict the direction the survivors are going to go. Assuming they're drawn up... <laughs> 
assuming the survivors are running in a direct straight line, it is about like a meter away from them that you have to hit a little bit more than that. You just have to watch gameplay to see it, but the main thing is you really just have to feel it. You get a feel for it by playing it. I can tell you, but it's it's not going to help. Like, there's no one answer, especially because survivors will run in circles and stuff, which will change it. So you just got to get a feel for which direction the survivors are running, and there's no way to do that without just practicing, 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 the and just playing it. Just experiencing it and then you just feel it it becomes like muscle memory to you like okay i draw the wall here the survivor's running this direction um there is more stuff on this map i can talk about but again to be a hundred percent fair with you i don't use this map a lot i am not that familiar with it i wish i did i should have back when this map was really powerful but i just did not um i just had other hunters i preferred on this map so yeah um I'm probably not going to talk about Chinatown, but these are the main maps, at least. Let me get hit by the tram again. Hit me. <laughs> Take me out, please. Please, child. Just wait for it. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. Poor Mad Eyes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, good old bloke. He's, old he's a good bloke. He's a nice bloke. Alrighty, I'm going to show you some gameplays of Mad-Eye that can uh, hopefully help you out. Not the full thing, just clips. These gameplays are from people like uh, Happy Bud, by the way, that take gameplay from Chinese ga uh, servers and they record it using the in-game recording feature they have in China for these types of games and they upload them here. This is not content stolen off of like Billy Billy or stuff. This is just stuff using the in-game recording system. So I'm going to start off with the... Uh, What's the word? Hospital. Hospital map gameplay. So we spawn. Perfect mad eye skin. Beautiful. Confined Dean. He goes over here. Gets on that console. Blah. Uh, doesn't actually block anything. Looks around. And then he's going to block off this cipher instantly. Sees mechanic. Hits the doll. Because it's stationary. And mechanic's going to be a bit surprised. And she's going to get hit because of that. Alright. He's going to make his way over to the console. Ignore... Uh, him mercenary and she's actually pretty close where it's probably better for him just to walk keep in mind he's going sort of a chase build he has a blink which means that it's easy for him to blink on her if it's necessary but mechanic is not doing herself any favors here standing out in the open i guess she didn't know where mad eye was situated he didn't she didn't see him right over there didn't know the small i don't know uh, anyway she's making the mistake of running into an area with full console and Mad Eye is going to punish her for that. Ouch. She should really watch what she's doing. He's going to draw a wall here, block that cipher off again, 15 seconds. And then he's going to do something really smart here. I'm sorry, my throat's starting to hurt <laughs> from talking. Boom. Between a rock and a hard place. Bada booey. And then just uh, hit her down. Use your, your portable console when you get the chance. Wall it off. Bazinga. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. 10 out of 10 would do again. And then he chairs her. Skip forward a bit. This is one of the best chairs in the game, by the way. Also, he's going to scroll down. Make sure he goes all the way down. Draws a wall. Block off that cipher. Can't decode as much. So, you see the Merc over there. He's going to use his thing. Also, keep in mind he has tinnitus. Because all Mer uh, Mad Eyes have tinnitus. And so he knows that there's a Merc nearby. Builds a wall over here to block the Cypher. Builds a wall here. It's so fast you don't even see it being put up. But he does it. Uh, see? And it's going to be five seconds. One potato, two potato, three potato, four potato, five potato. And it's going down. See? Hits the Merc. He's going to get the save, but it's going to be after half. Which is really going to hurt her. Mad-Eye will then... He uses his blink, by the way. Uh, I'm just going to rewind to show you that. Hits him and then uses blink to get her. Boom. He's going to finish off Mechanic on a different chair than he started, not a best chair, and then he's going to put Merc back into the OP chair. 
Bada boom. Skipping forward a bit. Um, at this point, he basically has one person dead and another person with a chair on them, and it's good killings. You can watch the full match if you're curious. Oh, my throat. Oh, ow. Why do I talk too much? This is going to be a, an example of a mad eye who's going for a chip build, but he's forced into using um, chase. He's forced into going chase play style. Uh, what I want you to keep in mind when watching this is that sometimes you have to switch what you're doing. It's not going to be 100% one or the other. This is Mad Eyes, by the way. At the time, he was number one. And he tends to prefer the chase style, but sometimes he'll go chip style. So this was him going a chip style, but I've seen him prefer chase style. So I'm a bit surprised he wanted to go chip in the first place, but he changed it mid-game anyway. So he starts off, he goes to the console. Let me see. So there's someone over here spawn, someone over here spawn. They just need three seconds. One potato, two potato. He manages to hit her before they can do the thing. But if we rewind, we got this person over here who's on their console. And then they get on it right now. One potato, two potato, three potato. This person has finished decoding their console. Mad Eye can physically not interact with it or do anything with this area. As you can see, there is a wall. That was not Mad Eye. That was this person wasting energy. Uh, he's poking around. Notice how they're decoding the front of the ciphers, not the corner. Smart strategy. And notice how she runs back. This might have been one of those instances where I would have put the wall a little bit before her so that she could get hit. Again, they're decoding the back of the ciphers. And yeah, they're not doing the corners. This time she is doing the corners just because there's a wall there. If I were Mad Eyes, I would have put a wall in this area right here. But he puts it right back here in the same area. I don't blame him for that. What he's doing is he's just trying to put walls as fast as he can, really. He's not too worried about where he's placing them. But he could have technically trapped her, I think. So now what he's doing is he puts the wall a little bit further back. And ugh, Priestess almost gets hit by that. So close. He put it just a little bit too far back. Barely. And then the whole point is that this is all going on. No one has damage. And this lasts for a bit with no one getting damage. So he's eventually forced to say, "I, you know what? I can't do this. I have to actually get there on foot. I'm going to have to chase them. Because I can't just keep hitting nothing. So he goes after where he knows the mechanic is. He did end up uh, getting one tap on her. I can actually show you that real fast. Yeah, around here. Oh, wait, no, that was Priestess. Forgive me, I'm stupid. He actually did hit her with that one, which is good. I'm going to actually go over that one more time because that's that's a good thing. I'm sorry, I missed Saw. He put the wall a little bit behind her, and she ran into it. That's what I'm talking about by putting the wall behind them sometimes. It does work. Anyway, he's not able to get them for a bit, so he has to actually teleport over to chase the mechanic. Mm -mm, ugh. Mad Eye also has the fastest pallet breaking speed in the game. I'm pretty sure it's the fastest or it's like really close to being the fastest, if I remember correctly. It's really good. She runs inside and he gets her. He chairs her and he does not do the body block thing with the door because when he looks on here, he sees there's footprints up there. So there's no point. They're not even saving from the other direction. <coughs> oh, my throat. And then they get three, and I could show you the rest of the gameplay, but that's just, it's really long. You can watch it. My throat hurts too much. Oh, yeah, this gameplay. Ugh. I hate Lakeside Mad Eye, you know that. But the thing about this one is I just thought it was funny, because the whole reason they lost, uh, the survivors lost, is because Postman was stupid. They could have completely avoided this. Look at that. So Burke had draw, drew, drawn Druith a wall here. And then the postman ran away. And then he came back. And then he drew another wall. Keep in mind this will only last 15 seconds. 
And then seeing that, being fully aware that Mad-Eye had drawn two walls creating a box, what does he do? He decides to stay there when it's blatantly obvious what he's trying to do. He's trying to create a trap. No, duh. And the postman's like, yeah, well, he just created a trap over there, assuming I might be in this place. I'm just going to stay here and let him do it. So postman, like, really messed up his team here. No, not to be mean. Like, he, it happens to the best of us. But, like, Mad-Eye, I'm not saying he should have lost, but I'm saying the reason he got that first kill was because the postman was stupid. I don't like Lakeside Mad-Eye. Why do I have two videos of that? Oh, here's some red church. I mean, not red church. Moonlit. Le Leo's. Leo's. Leo. It's some Leo. Sorry. Console. I'm, this is just a chip build example of him going chippity chip chip on survivors. Hits a here. He's going to run into it. No one here. Uh, am I crazy? No one there. Oh, footprints. Uh... That guy's not worth hitting. He's gonna get out of the area. Oh, survivor here. This guy could probably... He's at the start of the animation, so... Yeah, okay. He gets off. Did he hit him? He did! Alright, here's another good example. So in this instance right here, the, the mercenary is facing this direction, by the way. He has to, to decode. He gets a notification that Mad-Eye is next to him. And he's going to run backwards. He's going to run backwards. And that's why this Mad-Eye does the smart decision of putting the wall behind him. Not like through the area, but behind him. And he runs into it. He does it to himself. Gets another hit right here. They kind of walk into that one. They could have easily avoided that. Uh, I would do a wall right around here. Either way, wouldn't have hit him. He can avoid that. I want to skip to the part that makes me cry. All right, yeah. So Mad Eye, uh, is Mad Eye. He's got zero energy right here, if you can see it, out of 500. So he's basically, like, just dying on energy. There are two people over here who are, they are wounded. What do wounded people do? They heal. Mad Eye's like, okay, well, I need to get over there. I don't want to waste my teleport just because it's not that far away and I can just walk over there. So he decides to walk over there. And then these people decide to do something very stupid. This is the 19th Mad Eye, so I don't think, like, I don't understand why they're being this stupid. You, like, you think at 19th it's still pretty decent of a number. But anyway, what they decide to do is climb up the flipping stairs, which goes exactly as well as you thought, even if there's only 23 things. So they go up. And they're like, oh, it's not a big deal. What, what, whatever, whatever. And the Mad Eye's malarking about. And then when does he do the thing? All right. Seer, Seer. You have been trapped, Seer. You are now trapped. He is trapped back here. Good job, Seer. The thing is, <clears throat> if I were Mad Eye, what I would what I would do is I would draw a wall behind me and vault and then try to hit Seer. But the problem is, as you can see, this area is one of those glitch spots I was talking about because of this weird object here. It's actually making the wall a bit of a gap here that should not exist there. So for some reason, because of that, he's actually able to get through, which almost never happens. But this is just like one of those very rare instances I mentioned where if you vault, they can sometimes get through, but it's really rare. I would have been really mad if I was this mad eyes. This should not have happened. It should not have happened, but it did. I would be mad. I'd be fuming. But yeah, he still stupidly got himself trapped and then he manages to walk into a wall. Good job. Did it to yourself. And then there's a lot more interesting stuff. That's a good example of chip build. Um, this is a good example of chasing. It wasn't a chase build, but he ended up chasing with it. 
This was actually a chase build that ended up becoming more chip, despite it being a chase build. And this was a postman being stupid and allowing the Mad-Eye to win example. So yeah, 